Hi friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some different options for tool storage and organization. Really neat couple of ideas here. Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you wanna bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. I think every technician in the world at some point in their career has a toolbox that looks like this, or it still looks like this. In today's video, I'm going to show you uh, some options to shadow boxing, but I'm also going to show you some shadow boxing examples too, because there's really a time and a place for everything. Real quick, let me show you this alternative idea of inventorying your toolbox with a QR code. Let me show you real quick, and then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do the whole thing beginning to end on your own. All right, I'm gonna show you how I can use this. I'm gonna go to my Google Drive and then just start from scratch, tool, inventory. So here's the suspension one I started so far. And then here's all the photos of all the tools that are in that drawer, or should be in there if you will. And then I haven't finished yet, but I even started a spreadsheet. I don't know how crazy I'll get. I don't know if I'll do part numbers or whatnot, but most likely I'll do prices because I kind of want to have a total inventory of what do I actually own. And this is more for just the business and insurance end of things. If we get out of there, go back to the folder itself, it's really easy to add future photos or files and just hit that plus sign and it's going to dump it right in that folder. So it's pretty slick. I do find this easier doing a computer as far as creating documents and stuff for uploading like one photo at a time it's super rad to just hit that upload and then decide what you want to do from there so another benefit too is like let's say you get in here and you think like maybe you don't have all the pieces to a tool the day you put it in there you would have a photo of everything that was included so you see these three little adapters in here if i was a little bit confused and thinking oh i could have swore i had another size in there i'd be able to grab this photo and go nope day I bought it and put it in there, this is what it came with. So kind of a lot of benefits to get fancy here with this technology. And then the other thing I want to make a point of is people will say, well, this isn't really organizing. And I disagree with that because there's no way I could fit this many tools in that toolbox. Like, let's look at another view here. You can do a, just a view like this. There's no way I could fit all those tools in that same drawer if they were shadow boxed. So what I'm doing is organizing all my suspension tools as much as humanly possible in one physical drawer. And to me, that's organization. I just have it all in there. The challenge really gets to, you know, still kind of digging around and getting to stuff. So how you separate it, you notice in some of my drawers, I have these little white totes and that's another way that I organize it. But like I said, this is, um, how I found to be able to maximize putting a lot of stuff in those drawers and then knowing what's in there. A lot of people look at what's called shadow boxing. If you've never seen this before, that's where the tool has a exact cutout, usually in a type of foam. And then the really fancy ones like this kit that I use here at Zipline has different colors. So when the tool is out, it really stands out and you know it's missing. In the world of aviation, this is a huge deal because they want to know that the tools are out of the aircraft or out of the system so something couldn't be turned on or ran and obviously cause a big problem. So tool inventory is really super important when it comes to shadow boxing. People ask me all the time about this whole zipline thing and if you really want to learn more about that you can head on over to our Facebook page and I talk a lot more about my travels and what happens there, what I do. I run a global academy for Zipline International training their technicians. Mark Rober, famous YouTuber, just did an unbelievable video. What's it got now? 17 million views in 13 days. That tells the whole story of what we do at Zipline and where the future is coming. Head on over there, connect. Love to see you on there. Zipline's a international drone company that is really uh, known on the world for delivering blood and healthcare products by drone. I do the training all over the world. That's why these toolkits are super stinking cool. 
because I could grab them, throw them a plane and get to work. But even for the people at the sites, they could just grab them and go work on the system. So this is everything to work on this one particular piece of equipment. They don't have to go look for anything. So another big advantage to shadow boxing. But a lot of us uh, techs in the car and motorcycle industries, you know, see this type of organization and we're just drawn to it. It's really cool. It looks cool. It's pretty neat. It's gotten a lot more affordable for the do-it-yourselfer. You'll see some ads. I'll put on some stuff from uh, Amazon here. You can buy the foam and you can buy different colors and you, then you get to buy the, the cutter and then they make special fancy markers that will get really nice and close to the tool so that you can cut it out. It's just, it's pretty heavy on the labor side if you ask me. I want to give a shout out to uh, Project Car here. He has probably the best video I've seen on how to go about and what tools to buy and how to label them and mark them. I'll put a, a link below in his video. I just probably couldn't even do as good a job as he did with his. So check, uh, check him out there. I don't know the guy. I just think it's pretty stinking awesome. Dang near a million views. Too. So great video. And once again, there's a time and a place. So if we look at most of our toolboxes, I'll just look at one. Now, my little machining area, I bought this toolbox that came with this lathe that was pretty rad. And it actually had a bunch of the mics shadow boxed in. Now, this is something I say is always worth the time on a tool if you don't have the original case and it's a precision tool, I think this is fantastic. And you can actually see where some loose pieces have landed in here. Not the end of the world. I mean, it's still pretty high function, right? I dig it. This is a great way to shadow box. Can't stress it enough. I still, though, want to put labels on the outside of the drawer that would say, like, mic set one inch to six inch or something like that. Uh, or 25 millimeter to 100 millimeter. Here's another example where it was shadow box and it made no sense, right? Like... I've got more calipers, why they decided to put drill chucks in a drawer that they shadow boxed calipers for. It just didn't make any sense at all. So labels would be way better off in a lot of cases. But back to how to wrench. As I moved into this new space, I ended up gaining a lot of upward storage. So how I organize things became much more critical, right? Like I don't want to be jumping up on a ladder to try and go find a diagnostic tool sitting in a box, right? So I bought a new toolbox here with a little side locker and bought this Husky toolbox to really try and help with this organization. So what did I do? I do what I've always done. I go back to traditional labeling, making just some labels on the drawers as I've started to get things organized. So at least all the light kinds of tools are in the same box. You could see one here that I haven't done yet. I love this toolbox, by the way. It's been pretty rad. Mod this LED light on there. It's kind of cool. Here's a bunch of diagnostic equipment. I better grab this computer. It's one of the things I came for, so I don't forget it. <laughs> Take advantage of that while I'm thinking about it. So as you see all the tools that are in here, you're gonna have to like pull stuff out to figure out what's underneath it and so on. And so let me show you real quick, I'll just jump to what you're gonna be able to learn about how to do in this video is I got this new fancy schmancy label maker that is very inexpensive. You'll see the links on Amazon, but it has the ability to do QR codes. So I can hit that QR code, let me get to focus here. And boom, check out the screen recording I did earlier. I can take and put every tool with a photo of that tool in a shared folder on Google Drive. And then now I know everything that's in this drawer. And at least I should know everything that's supposed to be in this drawer. The thing that really motivated me to take the step when uh, Make ID reached out to me was the fact that I went to go do a set of forks on a bike that I was selling. If, if you saw me sell the RC51 not too long ago, and I could not for life of me find this suspension fork oil level gauge. And it was pretty frustrating because I'm like, gosh, dang it, I know I have it, but where is it? And, you know, if I loaned it out, I usually have a pretty good checkout sheet. But unfortunately, in this case, it was my fault. It just got shoved in another drawer. Maybe I missed a drawer. I think it ended up in here. And, ah, frustrating. But 
instead of like looking around for hours for a tool going, do I have it? Don't I have it? Especially, you know, when you've been at this for a long time, it can all become a blur, right? You start to look at all the duplicates of all the things you have. What's super rad about this is I'm at least going to know whether it should be in there, right? Like if that's the expectation. So it also allows me the opportunity to do like some inventory control for insurance to say like, hey, this is all the tools I had. If I ever had a fire or theft, I'd go to the insurance company and just be like, yep, here's all the folders. Here's everything I had. Super legit there. So stay tuned to the whole video. I'm going to show you how you can do that yourself, whether you want to make just, you know, everyday standard labels or if you wanna get fancy and do like QR codes, I'm gonna show you all that. So you can come back to that. But before I get back to that, I kinda of wanna sell you on this idea of why this is also kinda of cool. So in my suspension drawer there, I gotta dig around, find what I need to find or whatnot. Not such a big deal, cause it's more what I call grab tools. But when you start to get into like stuff like this, where it's a bunch of diagnostic tools and cases, you're emptying the whole thing out to get back in there. That's where the QR code would be super rad. And when you title the pictures, or I could even put a Google, you know, uh, doc folder in there that says shelf to, you know, uh, bottom right. You can get as crazy as you want, depending on how fast you wanna access those tools. That is the big thing we're looking at. When you do shadow boxing, this is because you're trying to, you know, say this is everything I need, right? Or this is everything to say that I would have in that drawer. Do you know how hard it would be to think about shadow boxing this and not think, oh, am I ever gonna get another pick? Well, wait, I went and bought this one-off pick and now, I don't have a place for it. Even here at Zipline in our toolkit, you could see where we had to like cut it out. It looks crappy. We dug it out because when I came on, one of the first things I made a big deal about was we should be using breaker bars instead of torque wrenches. Even though this is a really rad kind of torque wrench from CDI that actually has a lock position so that it's not using the torque wrench. It actually becomes a breaker bar. But I'm not a fan because of a little thing called muscle memory. And then people that you know aren't necessarily experts may choose to grab that tool and use it the wrong way. And we don't wanna be using calibration equipment for that. So once again, why did we need to modify the shadow box? Because I didn't like it. So that's, that's really just the intro of this video. Like I said, I'm gonna show you uh, this cool new label maker, it's significantly cheaper. In the past, you can see a couple models here I've used from this Brothers one that was, uh, it got me by for a lot of years, made a lot of labels, but gosh dang it, it just went through batteries like crazy. Matter of fact, I still have it, so I'm still using it. I'm still using it till just, uh, just a few days ago, but, oop, I wanna take these out. I don't need them anymore. It just eats batteries like crazy. It, when I wouldn't use it for like a few months at a time, I'd actually take the batteries out. They'd surely be dead. But these cartridges got to be a little spendy. But the batteries were the big thing that were killing me. And just to be honest with you, I hated this keyboard. Just hated using it. It was nothing but a pain. When I saw this one, didn't even get that excited about it until I found out it had an iPhone app. And then when I found out I could draw and do emojis and all kinds of crazy stuff, I could hand write labels. The amount of flexibility in this thing was so rad that the app itself got me really stoked. Plus it's rechargeable, it's USB-C rechargeable. So now I'm done with the whole battery you know, uh, deal. It's funny, I have, a, I have a video I haven't even made yet where I bought rechargeable batteries, AAA, AA, 9 volt. The 9 volt for my temp guns, because I go through those like crazy. The AAAs for this. So now I'm like, I'm not even going to need them for, for this case in AAA. But anyway, yeah, this is super rad. Here's a nice close up of that label. But anyway, let's get into the video. Like I said, I'm going to show you the different ways that you can use this on like total steroids. But pretty cool. I'll get you through the, uh, through the app and everything else too. And if you decide to buy this for yourself, you're going to love this video because it's going to be the exact how to video for this brand but hey thanks to uh make id for choosing how to wrench to be a partner on this and let's just get into it and make the video 
The Make ID E1 model label maker comes packaged really nice, a nice heavy duty box that's supported. Comes with a manual, comes with a charge cord. It's pretty short. If your charger's not really accessible, you'll probably want a longer one, but it is USB C. And then the cartridges load really easy, just load in the rear, you'll see in a second. And the last thing is ours came fully charged, so it was kind of nice to be able to use it uh, right out of the box. Let's just start by using the keyboard that so you can see how this works just like right out of the box before we go to the app. At the beginning of the video I said like the whole reason this caught my attention was I really wanted to use an app, you know, on my phone and knock it out really quick, right? So I, you know, playing around with this, I am a little bit surprised how easy it is to get through and how to navigate. I started playing around with these, you know, you could change the text, you know, which uh, direction you want the text just in the click of a button. Let me just put some text in there. Just make something easy here. You could change that like in two seconds. I was able to notice a couple things here, like when you change from caps or not, you'll see it change there. You want to change the font. See, I just hit this text button here, and that gives some different options. Not as much as the app, but kind of gets through things. I got bold, italics. Let's see, there's oh, it does the whole word or the whole thing you type out. That is cool. So you don't have to go back one at a time. Underline. Let's take those off. And then the one feature I really loved about the app was this border. And I noticed the very first one of these I printed had a border already on it when I was kind of playing around. And what I noticed is this little guy right here, see that one? When you pop this up, it gives you some different things you can toggle through. And two borders, just some different choices. Got some graphics on there. It looks like a little notepad. Um, oh, that's cool, a little clipboard. There's actually quite a bit in here. If I hit the downs at doing a thing. Uh, not in this screen. I'm going to go back to the one because I know that's the one I'm going to like. Simply hit OK. And so, I mean, there's a lot of functionality in here. Obviously, you'd have to go through the manual and find out. Looks like you can save, put in folders. Oh, look at that. A whole bunch of emojis. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there's that down. You need a little hamburger in your uh, little menu there. They got motorcycle. Let's see. I wonder, let's see, let's, what if I did, how do we get over, I did one, oh, you know what, I bet you go to the top, yep, you go there, looks like fruit, we got here some signage, is that it, let's just see what we get here. The shoes, clock, power. Oh, that's cool. That's one I could see using. All right, I'm just having uh, too much fun right now here. There was the back button, went right back there. Um, some of the sizing, you can change how wide you want it. If I just simply delete that, what's it do? It tells me how long the label's gonna be. Love it! Cool. I'm probably still gonna use the app. But that's pretty handy. Uh, phone's dead, not around, and you need to make something really quick. That's going to be great, too. So, All right, head on over to your app store, hit Make ID, and then choose the Life version. So double-click to install. And then next, it's going to ask you if you will allow Bluetooth and a user agreement. Pretty common. And then the next thing it's going to do is pick your model. And... Then when you go to connect to it, make sure and have the printer on so that it can uh, connect to it and you can start printing right away. Next, you need to choose the size of the label you're going to use. And then lastly, you'll wait for a device connected verification screen and then you're ready to start using the app and making labels.
when I went back to make a duplicate uh, label here, I didn't know about the history function at this point either, so I could have just went and looked at history and reprinted it. But another thing you can do, as you'll see, is you can uh, actually change the number of copies into a simultaneous cut of multiple copies. Uh, and then it, you can put that little box there to cut, uh, mark the cut line. Now check this out. You have to cut it, but at least when you print it, it'll show you where you need to cut. I fumbled around for a bit thinking it was something like a Band-Aid or something, but no, you got to cut it with scissors. All right, let me show you another way that this is going to be super handy. So you can see here, this is the remote to my lift, and because it's it's magnetic and the, the cord faces this way, I actually have it mounted upside down technically. So if I were to put the the labels like most people hold it like this, I can't read them and they're going to be upside down. So what I'm going to do is just uh, I'm going to I'm going to get uh, some alcohol, clean this off, and then attach these stickers quick. My monkey prints have been on there enough. And that looks nice. Love it. I like the, the templates that I found there with the black outline. It was defaulted on the machine itself and the app. I had to go kind of play around with this and look for it. But this is going to be so much easier to operate now for like friends and other techs working in here where they're just plain not used to it. Now it's gonna be nice to uh, operate that. Put it back on the safety. That is gonna be so nice for other people. I want to show you one of the other things I thought was super rad about this, especially from a business point of view, is when, when you all buy t-shirts or buy some of our gear or whatnot, or if you're a business selling something, what's pretty cool, you can do QR codes, okay? So I'll go here and it says, create QR code from text or scan a QR code, copy the link to a QR code, things like that. So I'm just going to do this. I'm gonna try one quick here. Let's go back to, uh, let's see, text. Let's go back here. Uh, let me delete this. And then I'm going to do how to wrench. Uh, let's see, dot com. And then QR code, QR code from text, create the QR code of text. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Oh, I mean, you can really play with this thing. Let's see what happens. I'm curious. Let's go ahead and print it. Print one copy. Nice little label you could put on packaging. Now let's find out if it actually links through. I may have to actually go get the you know the true full uh, HTML, but let's find out. I'm gonna. I took my chances, so let's find out how I did. Go to photo, and I go here. Hey, look at that! Took it right to the website. So how? stinking cool is that that this cheap little label maker you can do your own uh, QR codes he could do fun stuff too when I was training on my team in Japan last year they put a QR code on my laptop and I didn't see it for a few days and I looked at it and I'm like oh what they put on there and they <laughs> put Sensei Shane is the best teacher or something like it. it was so cute but it was just really fun that you could do really uh really rad stuff with this so to do the inventory uh tool drawer process. The first thing I do is take all the tools out and individually photograph them. 
and be mindful to try and keep all the like pieces together but separate all the tools so that they're they're individual tool photos if you're going to put more than one tool in a photo like you're going to see i'm going to do at times in this it's because like maybe i just want to take a picture of four damper rod holders instead of having four individual ones and then that photo would represent hey these are all the tools i have that do this task so you can be really creative and customize it here could use google photos but since i do drive for a lot of business stuff i'm going to go ahead and use that as my as my folder so if i go here go to drive i'm gonna do a new folder okay and i'm gonna call it tool inventory this would be cool for insurance purposes as well okay so tools uh, also they make me money right so let's give it just a different kind of green make it stand out a little bit now let's go in here i'm going to create a new folder okay and let's call it suspension suspension okay great okay so there's that folder right all right i'm going to show you beginning to end how to create this google drive management system for your toolbox drawer so i do see some people on the internet using google photos uh i'm not familiar with it i'm in drive all the time for business so that's why i'm doing it there if you have a better reason to do this through google photos please share in the comments but you're going to choose drive now remember, we've already taken our photos, so this is really the order that we wanna do this, okay? So we're just gonna pretend for a second here that I don't have a folder made. So then I go down here, hit this plus sign, and then you can start to see, I get some choices there. I'm gonna create a folder. That's how I'd, I'd go about it. But since I already have started this, I'd like to take advantage of what I already got in here. And this is how you would add to existing folders in the future. So I made a master folder called tool inventory. So here's my individual folders I've already been working on. So I'm just gonna create a new one from here. So if I go to plus and I go to folder and I wanna make a diagnostic number two. Okay, got that folder. Now this part's really important, okay? So let's open that folder and you see it's empty. And just to prove a point here, let's go back to suspension. This is the one I'm doing the demo on. You can see all my tools are in there, okay? Even started a inventory sheet I haven't used yet, but we'll get there. So get back here to drive, let's get out of here. So in this diagnostic two, that's empty. The moment I hit this plus button, I'm gonna get one time shot to add all the photos from my phone that I took for this drawer in here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to show you an option around that, okay? Because if you don't do it right now, it'll only limit the photos you've given Google permission to use. I'll show you here, okay? So photos and videos. So once again, the very first time you have a new folder, you're going to get this option, and that is why we want those photos already taken. So if I do select more photos, okay? I'm just gonna go in here just to, to prove a point of moving photos over here. Let me just grab like, uh, I don't want this many. I'll just grab one, you know, this one tool and let me grab this sticker. Now I get to this screen and this is where I was saying you, you miss that option if you don't choose it the first time. So now I go here and go recently added or recents and there's those two photos so if I click the two photos and I hit upload, they're gonna be dumped into this diagnostic two folder. Okay, you can see those are going. And while those are getting in there, here's the next thing that I need to do, okay? Now, it was important that I put photos in here. If this folder is empty and you try to create the shared link for your label, I can't get it to work. So what I've learned is you need to make sure and have something in the folder before you try to share it. So from up here, I get those three little dots and I, I got a couple things, manage access or share, okay? I'm gonna go to share. 
And this is where I could add people and say, well, this is who I want to have access to this folder. So if you had multiple employees, this is the way you could do it. Another option is to simply go in here and not have it restricted. You can choose anyone with the link. So this is what a lot of people do for business where they're gonna share something off their website or whatnot and that they wanna store it on Google Drive. And then in here, you wanna make sure that are they a viewer, a commenter, or can they edit it? So quite commonly on a website, you just view it. If you're doing a business collaboration, you allow them to make you know comments and then if it's an employee, it'd be like an editor, right? Okay, but I'm gonna go back to, I just want it to be me. I don't need it to be out there for anyone. There's no one else using this. So. I got it there. So I'm gonna hit the copy link button in the top corner. You see it says link copy to clipboard, okay? All right, now that I got all that jazz done, let's just get out of here, okay? I'm happy with all that. I'm gonna get out of that folder. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the uh, Maker app here, and let's make that fancy label. So I got Maker ID. This time I got 16 millimeter label. What I want to do is, if you remember, I like those frames. So I go here, choose any frame I want. I'm just going to go simple, hit OK, go back to text. And now I'm going to do diagnostic, OK, and then number two. OK, I'm going to shrink this down my fingers. I'm going to hit the OK. And then from here, I'm gonna to go to QR code, okay? And then I'm gonna create, I'm gonna use the bottom one, copy link to create QR code because it's sitting there on my clipboard. See, just automatically pops up. I hit allow paste. I'm gonna hit yes. There's my label. Now, when I was learning how to use this, I was wasting a bunch of label material because I had the wrong link or was doing it wrong and it's just trying to make it, figure out how to make it work. So here was what I, learn to do to, to not waste any product. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna screenshot this right now. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send that to my computer. I'm gonna airdrop it to my computer. Okay, then I'm gonna go to my camera. And, uh, I'm gonna test this before I print it. And voila, we know we're good. Well, now that I've done this, that's where I can go back and go, I feel confident. I go ahead and hit the print, print the label, and then you're done and good to go. So one of the things I plan to do is to try out, they have a, a tape that is supposed to have another layer on it. The tape that I got was a little thin, I feel, for like us greasy mechanics or whatnot. Yet, weirdly enough, I haven't gotten any grease on the couple labels I work with so far. So I just know that I saw on their website that they have one that's supposed to be like a heavier duty with a with a thicker film on it. Maybe a good idea for our applications. But love the two-sided uh, peel tape on that. Makes it really nice and easy. It seems really durable. I'm pretty happy so far. All right, friends, before we sign off, we hope that this video maybe inspired you on some different ways that you could organize your tools a little bit better to make yourself either a little more efficient or, like I said in the beginning, so that you don't end up buying two of the same thing. We've got a lot of things we uh, still want to label and make better, but as we've got started, we think this is pretty stinking cool because I sure like the look of that versus the old Sharpies on here. Uh, if you like this, the Amazon link will be below. We got some discount codes we're going to put uh, in there. They gave us as well for our fans. I want to give a shout out to Maker ID for making that offer to Hot Wrench fans so that they can go grab their own. If you got, you know, tips that you do or ways that you do things uh, that you think the rest of viewers would like to see, drop some comments below. Let us know what is your method for organizing your tools so you don't have to hunt for them and you don't end up buying extras. We're going to get back out in the shop. As you can see, we got a lot of uh, work to do here on top of finishing moving into the space here. So as always, make sure and like, share, subscribe, join the channel if you can as a way to support us. Best two bucks a month you ever get. Uh, you'll get me direct uh, a lot faster, a lot more often. I check the member messages every single 24 hours. So appreciate you all. As always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.